morning, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life and today's lunch and learn is about sales. Now, sales um, can feel like a bit of a dirty word, a bit of an awkwardness that creeps into that conversation the minute you start talking about money or exchanging a price or the price of your package or whatever. And it can feel actual physical, that, that transition you're talking about oh my goodness, they're talking about you know, what you do and the power of nutrition and all the things you, you can help them with. And then that um, the next part of the conversation is asking the price and telling them the price and uh, actually converting them or asking them to commit. So that can be a very physical change. And, and it can be, the vibe can be picked up by the client or whoever you're talking to very, very easily. So um, sometimes that, that wobble that you feel, that awkwardness that you feel, talking about money can actually uh, be the, the closer for them, the deal breaker. Uh, so sales is an absolutely vital skill uh, to, to master if you're going to grow your business, earn money and be able to help more people, or any people actually. <laughs> now, sales, <coughs> sorry, sales can feel hard. Um, and there's a few reasons for this. The first thing is that if sales can feel hard when you don't really believe in the value that you're going to offer. Now, it seems obvious to me the value that we offer is can be transformative, completely change people's lives. But when it's us that we're selling, or when it's us that's on the line here and we are providing those services, um, <clears throat> we can get those inner critics, those uh, that imposter syndrome, that whole those voices that say, you know, well, who do you think you are to kind of ask for this kind of money? Or why would anyone, why would anyone want to pay you for this? You're just not worth it, right? You're not going to be able to help. Everything you do is mediocre to rubbish. <laughs> I'm being harsh here, but you know, we get those really nasty, mean voices. <clears throat> and that can stop, <coughs> that can stop us <laughs> truly believing in the value of what we do and what we offer. So that's when, you know, if you don't actually believe that that what you're offering is valuable to the person you're talking to, they're not going to believe it either. And sales is going to feel really, really hard. And it's virtually going to be impossible because they're not going to pick up on that. Well, they are going to pick up on that and not going to believe you. The second thing, reason it can be hard is that we can't communicate the value. So we might believe it, but we can't communicate what we have to offer and how brilliant it is. Um, again, if we don't believe it ourselves, or, or perhaps we don't have the clarity and the confidence in our products yet, maybe we're just starting out, maybe we haven't, you know, put, given much thought to our package or what might be best for that client, and it then becomes difficult to communicate the value of that. Thirdly, we may not have a very good structure to our sales process. So, um, you know, if you're suddenly asked you know, how you can help someone and you're just going to pluck it out of the air, have a chat with someone, and then it can all feel very jumbled and muddled. Um, and, you know, you don't know when to talk or when to listen. Um, without structure, the whole conversation can be quite confusing and, and disjointed. And then, you know, you don't know where you are in the conversation and nor does your potential client, right? They're confused too. <clears throat> um, and then also we can have uh, beliefs that are controlling our behavior. So I talked about this in the, in the video last week about your money mindset and how that can really sabotage you every time you come to talk about money because those beliefs just kick in and then they take over. <coughs> Excuse my cough. So how do we get better at this? How do we get better at sales? Because if you don't work on this, you're always going to be stuck with selling kind of low value things that, that actually aren't going to make the big differences to the people that you know that you your longer bigger packages can make to people so first of all you've got to know your value and again this refers back to the money mindset video but be really confident in your services now if you're just starting out and you haven't done much client work then look around you go and look at some of the the nutritionists out there the practitioners out there that are doing really well and are really changing people's lives if you need more convincing of that of your own value then go and um sit on someone's shoulder not the moment but maybe you know be a asked to be a, a zoom observer and see how they do it and, and the response to clients or just ask them for a couple of case studies or go and look at people's testimonials and see 
how much we're changing lives just by looking at nutrition, sleep, stress, and all the things we do. It is hugely important. Um, and, you know, we cannot ever undervalue what we do. It's incredibly important. So you are part of that. You are no different to any other NT out there. You may have just qualified. That's fine. You actually probably know more research than we do. Um, you just haven't had that clinical experience. But it is, um, you, you know, your, incredible, your knowledge is incredibly valuable. You know, we've spent, you've spent a lot of money on your training um, and you've spent a lot of time and effort on it. So be really confident in what you know and what you're able to do for people, because that in itself will completely um, transform your conversations. Second thing is to work on that money mindset. So go back to that video and have a look at what might be causing those kind of that awkwardness around money or, you know, those limiting beliefs around money and really work on that. Because that is um, if, you can, if you can nail that, you're halfway there or you're most of the way there. So the other thing to do is to use um, testimonials and case studies all the time. Not in every post, but, you know, pepper your posts, your social media posts and your blogs with case studies and stories. This is what not only, ref, you know, builds up your credibility and your expertise, um, but it also is really good for your own confidence as well. The more you read client testimonials and case studies, you know, the more you remember uh, how good you are and how you actually can transform people's lives. And that builds the confidence. So really get yourself in front of, if you're not getting testimonials already, I've talked about this before, but make sure you get something from <coughs> everyone you uh, deal with, clients, friends, whoever it is that you've helped, get them to put a little paragraph together. In fact, make a paragraph yourself of what you've done, what they came with, what the results were, why they would recommend you, that kind of thing. Very short and sweet, but make them a paragraph. Ask them if it's okay if you post that on, on social media or on your website with a little photo of them and uh, you're good to go. But again, like I said, it not only reflects and um, builds your credibility, but it's really good for your own confidence to keep reminding you, you of what you do. Next is to communicate the benefits and not the features of what you do. So the easiest thing in the world is to talk to a potential client about your program. So say, you know, oh my goodness, I have a three month program. You get uh, weekly consultations with me. Um, you get a Facebook group, you get a, an on handouts, you get these resources and those resources. Um, that's the easiest thing to do because there's, you know, there's, it's very, very safe to talk about that. And we love to put our programs together and what's included in that and all the rest of it. For the client you're talking to, it actually doesn't do, and it doesn't really move them at all. And it's not bringing them closer to committing to work with you because actually they really don't care about what's inside your program and how you structure it. The thing they really care about is what are they going to get out of it? What's in it for them? So you, instead of focusing on all the features, like how many calls they get, how many, you know, what tests they get, blah, 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 you've got to focus on the benefits. And that is, you know, what are they going to, how are they going to feel after working with you? What's going to be the end result? Now, you're not guaranteeing anything because obviously you can't do that. You're not promising that they are going to be 100% better. You're saying things like, you know, well, the majority of my clients after three months, they feel they have um, a ton more energy. And that's, you know, I remember one client and you can talk about somebody, Jane, who, you know, she had so much energy, she gave up her job and she started her own company. Or, you know, uh, one lady, she lost uh, a stone in three months and she was then able to fit into her clothes that she'd never, you know, she never thought she'd be able to fit into again. You're not saying this person is definitely going to get that. You're saying these are some of the benefits of working with me um, and what I and the way I do it that you can achieve. All right. So concentrate, concentrate on the benefits. And if you're talking to that person, you should have already listened um, to see what they're actually after. So then you can you can target that response, the benefit to actually what they're after. So if it's weight loss, you want to talk about people who've lost weight. If it's energy, people who've gained energy. If it's whatever else, sleep problems or digestive issues, tailor your story your case study or that example to that person's goal obviously because then they're going to relate to it okay so just talk about the benefits if they ask you about the features fine but they're not that interested they're just saying well what am i going to get from working with you what is this you know what is this program what does it do for people 
The next thing is to structure and practice your sales call. So most of your sales, if you're if you're selling packages like we do, most of your sales will come from sales calls, which is we offer a discovery call. We do 30 minutes. The reason for that is that we can get enough information from them to be able to determine what they need from us. OK, so you can't do that in 15 minutes. You just can't. You might get the information, but you yeah, then haven't got time to, to sell it, to sell your package. So 30 minutes gives us, I usually spend 15 to 20 minutes listening, gathering the information, and then 10 minutes offering them the solution. And that's how we structure our sales calls. The absolute key in a sales call is never give advice. It's not a mini consultation. You're not offering to solve their problems in half an hour. You're just having a discussion to find out whether you can actually help them, right? Or discuss their options. That is it. You're not going to give them the help on the call. And I see this time and time again, people giving free mini consultations. First of all, you can't do that in half an hour, can you, properly? And secondly, you, um, you don't wanna do that. You want to use the time to work out what they need and then offer that solution, right? Um, the key in a sales call is to listen. That's probably the one thing that, you know, you have to do. And, you know, we're all good at that. We're all good at listening that, you know, if we've ever done a consultation in clinic, if you've not done one in, in the real world, um, you know, 20 minutes information gathering is absolute minimum. Yeah. So that's where we listen. We ask questions, but, you know, just to keep the flow. We don't let them go off on a rant. We just bring them back to the things that we need to know. They have probably never been heard like that before. You know, if they've been to the doctors, you know, they might get five or six minutes to actually talk so this is incredibly uh important for them to feel heard so don't go in talking about what you do listen to them at least for 15 minutes solid with a few prompts in terms of what you need to know because what you're listening for is you want to listen for their motivation their why their goals what is it that they really really want and it may not be what they first say it is so Someone may say to you, um, you know, I want to lose weight. Well, you know, that doesn't actually tell you much about them as a person and what they're actually wanting to achieve. What you might want to ask, probe a bit further is why? Why do you, why do you want to lose the weight? What Get to their real why. <coughs> and it's probably when you get down a few layers, something, you know, to do with, you know, well, obviously it's their confidence, but um, you know, it might be that they want to look attractive so their husband won't leave them. You know, that's a real reason for them to do it. That's their real motivation. But losing weight is just the top line. So if you can get to that real reason, you can then start to offer that your solution in, in a way that gets them there. OK. Um, so the other thing is to, to remember is when you're talking about the price, um, you don't want to get awkward or apologetic when you say the price. So when you've listened to them and you've worked out what their goals are, um, you're not going to give advice. You're just going to say, um, obviously, you know, we can, I can help you with that. I've got a package that, that will get you there uh, or can help you get there. And uh, this is what it is. Um, it's cool, whatever. And I really, really recommend you, you get on board with it because you, know, you obviously haven't had the help you've you've had up to now you haven't had the support you need and um you know i can really help you so offer your solution your package and then when the price comes down to the time to say the price just say what it costs don't be apologetic don't feel awkward this is a value situation you've got something that they need you've got a solution to somebody's pain why wouldn't you offer your help for that you can make a difference. And if you don't sell it to them, you're not going to be able to help them. So they're still going to be in pain. So your solution is, it's, it's a it's a win-win, right? You get paid for your valuable experience and knowledge and they get a solution to their pain. There's nothing, there's nothing awkward about that at all. So um, don't feel awkward when you say it. Just say what it costs and then stay silent. Give them time for it to sink in. And then just very, very gently ask, would you like to go ahead? They're going to say yes, or they're going to say no, or they're going to say, I'm, I'm, you know, I need some time to think about it, whatever. OK. But you've got some kind of answer. Because sometimes we even forget to ask. That is, um, you know, we're so sort of caught up in the, well, you know, it's a thousand pounds and uh, three months and da, 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 da. OK, any questions? 
And then you just forget to actually say, would you like to go ahead? And half the time they're gonna say, yes, I can't wait to go ahead because it sounds amazing. And I want my life to change, right? The other thing is um, on a sales call is never ever assume anything, right? In the beginning, I used to assume, you know, if somebody was chatting to me about stress and I'd say, oh, you know, have you got any stress in your life? Oh yeah, financial worries or, you know, I don't know when I'm gonna get a job or whatever. And I'd immediately think, oh no, they're not gonna be able to afford my, my services. And then I'd sort of kind of get very sort of bit demotivated and kind of zoomed, listen, but zoom through to the end of the call thinking, oh, this is, you know, this is a shame. She's not going to be able to afford to get to get on board. And then quite a lot of the time they would turn around and say, oh, well, you know, um, I can ask, I, I can ask my mum. My mum wanted to give me something for my birthday and she's, and I think this is, this would be perfect. Or, oh, I, you know, we'd say we were saving up for um, a weekend spa weekend or something, but I'd much rather spend it on this. You cannot ever assume, A, how much money people have or how much they've saved up or whatever, or B, how much they value their health over something else. So that spa weekend suddenly didn't become as important as getting herself sorted for the long term. All right, so never ever assume anything. I've learned that the hard way. Um, but you know, I never assume now, ever. And sometimes it works out that way and sometimes it doesn't, but you just don't know. You really don't know. Okay. Um, the other thing, <laughs> a bit of hay fever today. Um, yeah, I think, you know, um, that's all I really wanted to say about that. Um, you know, getting to their real why is really, really important. If you get to their why and offer them a solution to get there or a path to get there, you'll have their commitment. Absolutely. And, you know, when we're pricing as well, we think, oh, it's too expensive. They're not going to be able to afford it. We all have very different values. So the money we put uh, on, a, on a particular solution may not be, may think you may think that's expensive for you. You might not pay that for some reason, but you don't know what someone else is, is how desperate they are to get that goal or to, um, to finally found someone then that can actually help them. Do you know how important that is and how valuable that is? Because they some of them have been around the system and tried every single practitioner, every single consultant, every single doctor they can think of and still haven't got that support. And you know, if you know deep down you can help them, then that's worth an absolute fortune. So um, how valuable is getting your energy back? I mean, seriously, you, you, it may not be much to you because you might have lots of energy, but if you're you know, struggling to get out of bed every day and you can't play with your kids or you can't go out because you're too tired, that is worth a, a lot to get that energy back to somebody. How much does it, is it worth to have your moods back to balance and you're not snapping at everyone and feeling absolutely awful all the time? How much is it to get that weight finally off and keep it off? You know, people would pay an awful lot to do just that, to not have IBS anymore, to get better sleep, to have a sharper brain and not have brain fog, whatever, whatever it is that you do. It's, um, we cannot put a value on that sometimes, it's priceless. So um, don't be afraid to sort of charge that higher amount and get rewarded for it because it's it's huge sometimes. It's really transformative and they'll be so, so grateful and appreciative um, and be singing your praises. And the higher you charge, the more committed they're going to be and actually the more compliant they generally are and the better results you're going to get. So it's win, win, win all around. I hope you enjoyed that and it was helpful today and I will see you again next week. Take care.